Hi, welcome back to Biochemical Lab Techniques. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about different steps that you're going to do to create a purification table. And this is going to be um, part one of several videos because this is one of the most misunderstood things in biochemistry and lab, and I'm hopefully going to clear a few things up in terms of how to do it. All right. All right, so basically um, you need several things um, already created um, in order to do this. All right, one of the things you need is your activity assays. Now, if, you have, if you're doing a purification table, obviously you're doing many steps of purification. So you start with something that's crude, and then you purify that, it becomes purer. You purify that, it becomes even more, even purer than that, and, and it gets more and more pure in theory. For every single... Um, step that you have, you need to do an enzyme assay if, it, if you're purifying an enzyme. Because part of the way you quantify how pure or the yield of your enzyme is, is by measuring its activity. In the previous video, we actually went over how you uh, calculate the activity per mil of an enzyme. And we're not going to go through a lot of the derivation here again, but you can watch that video and see how it was derived. And here, ultimately, um, we're just going to assume that you've seen it, but I'm just going to step you through what units things need to be in um, for everything to work out. All right. So you ultimately run the enzyme assay. We talked about what all these quantities are. The other thing that you need generally is something like a Bradford assay. Bradford assays are really common um, to use, and they're very good if you have a protein that's, that's pure. Um, basically, the, the Bradford assay allows you to quantify um, how much protein is in your sample, what concentration is there, okay? So what you generally do for a Bradford assay is you mix everything up with the Bradford reagent as your instructor or handout or lab um, protocol says, and you measure um, for various concentrations, so various dilutions of your stock. With the Bradford uh, reagent, you measure the absorbance at 595 nanometers versus concentration. And this is just Beer's law using a UV vis spectrophotometer because it's Beer's law over a certain range of concentrations you get a straight line. And of course you generate a regression line in the form Y equals MX plus B from that. And remember that Y is the absorbance, X is the concentration, and so on and so forth. Okay? All right. So when you're doing the purification table, these are the once you have all the data from that experiment or that purification step, the first thing I recommend doing is calculating the concentration of the enzyme that you have. Okay, so let's suppose we're going from step one to step two. So we, this, we have one, we just did one purification to get to step two. We do that. We want to do a Bradford assay on um, step two. We're going to figure out its con the concentration of the protein. Okay, so you run the Bradford assay and you measure its absorbance, right? Keep in mind that you should have already had this um, standard curve for the Bradford, Bradford assay done. Okay, you had to do a standard curve because what you're going to do is, is you're going to measure the absorbance of your, of your um, purified sample. Now, you don't know how, what the concentration of that is, but you can measure the absorbance. If you know the absorbance and you have a standard curve and you have an expression like this, you can back calculate the concentration from that. Okay, all right. So what you generally do is you, um, you take um, some of your purified sample. Generally, you dilute it. That's very important to keep in mind. Hold that in mind. You dilute it. You stick it in a cuvette um, with whatever it needs. Probably it's substrate, maybe some extra water, whatever. Shake it up, put it in the spec machine, and you measure the absorbance. Okay. So you know the absorbance. You know the y-intercept. That came out of the line. You know the slope. That also came out of Excel or whatever program you're using. The only thing you don't know is concentration. So you solve for concentration. So if you know the absorbance, you take A minus the y-intercept, you just measure this A, right, with your, um, your purified sample, minus B, the y-intercept, divide by the slope. And that gives you the concentration, okay? Now whatever units your concentration were in on this Bradford assay graph, that's the units you use. Generally, for this concentration, you do want it in milligrams per milliliter, and to be perfectly honest with the proteins, that's very common to use. So I would say, and this is just comes from experience, you want this enzyme concentration in milligrams per mil. Now, when you did the Bradford assay, this is something that's really important. 
With the Bradford assay, you're not just sticking protein in there, right? You have to put Bradford reagent, probably some water also, just different things, um, a buffer, you know, things in there, to where your protein is actually diluted, right? So this is why the dilution is the factor by which you dilute it's very important. When you do a Bradford assay, generally what you do is, suppose I have, um, I have a stock of my purified protein from that step. Let's say it's, I don't know, 20 mils. This volume is actually a little bit irrelevant right now. But what you're going to do is take a very small amount of this protein to use on the Bradford assay. So let's suppose you use, let's say, 5 microliters of your protein. It's a very small amount. That's actually a benefit of Bradford assays. You don't need a lot. Let's say you take 15 microliters of, uh, let's say, Bradford reagent. And then maybe, um, what is that, 180 microliters of water buffer or something. I don't know. I mean, just whatever your protocol calls for, okay? <coughs> this is actually probably buffer, to be honest, but you get the idea. When you add all this up, you get 200 microliters, if I did that right. So your well that you ran the Bradford assay in was 200 microliters, but that's not your volume. The volume you use is 5 microliters of protein, okay? So what is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the total volume and divide by the number of microliters of the protein and I actually typed in the wrong thing, 200 divided by 5, it turns out that that's 40. So it turns out that whenever I did this Bradford assay, this was actually a 1 to 40 dilution, which means that whatever concentration actually gets spit out by the Bradford assay when I do this up here, I have to multiply it by 40 because it was a 1 to 40 dilution, meaning my stock, this 20 mils, is 40 times more concentrated than what I actually did on the Bradford assay. So let's suppose I do this assay, the Bradford assay, I get an absorbance, I take A minus the y-intercept, divide by the slope, and I get the concentration in mil, mg per mil, milligrams per milliliter. Whatever I get for this number, I have to multiply it by 40, okay, because the Bradford assay was done in a 40-fold dilution, which means that whatever's in the purified protein stock is 40 times more concentrated. Okay, so this is one thing that's really important. When you're doing a lot of purification of proteins, you really need to make sure that you write down any dilutions that you do. It's very important because if you don't know what dilutions you do, you don't know actually how concentrated your solution actually is. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Anytime you're in a biochem lab, make sure to write down any dilutions that you do. Okay, so you just calculated the concentration of your protein. That's really important. Now let's calculate the activity per mil. That's what I would say is a good second step. So this is your, your formula right here. Now, in general, when you do this, um, you can have a dilution factor for this, um, an extra dilution factor. It may not really be necessary. Um, if it could be applicable, I'm going to do an example where it's really not. Okay, so I'm going to worry about these two on the top, um, delta A, delta T, V total, and these three things on the bottom. So DA, DT, that is the slope of your enzyme activity assay. We talked about that in the last video. So when you do your assay and you get this Y equals MX plus B, whatever this M is right there, that is your delta A, delta T. Okay, that is your essentially activity in units of per second. Okay, that's usually what it is because this time on the x-axis is in seconds. So you take whatever the slope of that line is that gets spit out through Excel, and that's what this is. However, you need to convert it to per minute. This just means that whatever this number is in per second, multiply it by 60, basically. Okay? Your V total, that's like this volume of the stock right here, your stock total. Say it's 20 milliliters, right? Just, you bear with me, but this needs to be in liters, and you'll see why it is. Just put this number in liters, okay? So if this is 20 mils, that'd be 0.02 liters. That's what you would plug in here. Let's assume there's no dilution. Now I have this extinction coefficient. Remember what the enzyme is catalyzing. It's, it's, it's molecule A being converted to molecule Z by the enzyme. And I'm measuring Z, right? And that's what I'm measuring. Oops, messed that up. Measuring Z. So I want to use the extinction coefficient of Z. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you this, that this extinction coefficient needs to be in units of micro, inverse micromolar inverse centimeter. 
Remember, extinction coefficients are norm normally reported in inverse molar, inverse centimeter, but you need to convert this inverse molar to inverse micromolar. Okay? The way you actually do that is just multiply um, this whole thing by 10 to the 6th. Okay, this whole thing, multiply by 10 to the 6th, then it'll convert inverse molar to inverse micromolar. The path length of the cuvette is just in centimeters. That's why this is in inverse centimeters. So this path length needs to be in centimeters. And then the volume in the cuvette, this is the volume of the enzyme that you actually put into the assay. So if you put, say, if you even if your stock solution is 20 mils, if you only put 0.04 mils into the assay, then this is the volume that you put here. The key here is it should be in milliliters, okay? If you did all these conversions correctly, you should get units of U per ml. And if you want that proved, I'll do a very um, short proof here. This delta A delta T is in, if I convert it to one over minute or inverse minutes, this volume is in liters. Um, if I have this extinction coefficient in um, inverse micromolar, which is liters per micromole, and then it's in also per centimeter. If the path length is in centimeters and this volume is in mils, notice what happens. I can cancel a bunch of stuff, but the point is, is that liters cancel with liters, centimeters cancel with, can with uh, centimeters, and the units you get are going to be micromoles per mil per minute, which just happens to be U per ml. Whatever, you number, whatever number you get by plugging in all this with the appropriate units, that's literally your number of U per ml. Okay, that's literally all it is. Okay, third thing I would calculate is the U per mg, which actually happens to be called specific activity, abbreviated SA, U per mg. Okay, so the way you can do this is you can take the U per ml that you just calculated and divide it by the concentration that you calculated in step one, accounting for the dilution factor, all right? So literally take this U per ml, divide it by the concentration in mg per mil, so you get U per ml over mg per mil. And one thing to just notice is the milliliters cancel here and you get U per mg. So you just plug in this number in U per ml, plug in the concentration in mg per mil, and whatever number you get, that's how many U's per mg you have. And that's the specific activity of the enzyme solution you have. Okay, let's go over here now. All right, how do you calculate the total enzyme? What's your V total? Well, if you come back over here, having trouble scrolling, Say you had a stock of your purified protein, 20 mils, right? That was how much you had of your purified protein. So literally this V total, in this context, what I've been doing would be 20 milliliters. <coughs> you just calculated a concentration that was accounted for by the dilution factor. So just take this concentration in mg per mil, multiply by the total volume of your protein that's purified, and that's the milligrams of enzyme that you have. That's the mass of the enzyme that you have, the total milligrams. Now if you want to find the total U, total activity, oops, that messed up, total activity, now what you do for that is you take the U per ml that you calculated, I think it was in step two, now just multiply by that total volume, I'm gonna, just for, these, for this example, I was using 20 mils, that was the volume of your purified stock of that protein. So take the U for, per ml, multiply by the total in milliliters, the milliliters cancel, and you get the total U, right? Another way of doing it, which is a little bit roundabout, is if you take the specific activity U per milligram and multiply by the milligrams of enzyme that you just got in the previous step, this number over here will be the exact same number that you got from over there, and that's the total U. So that's the total, oops, that is the total units of activity for this enzyme that you have, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. <coughs> so thanks for watching this video. This is, the, this is sort of an introduction to how you do different things on a purification table. In the next video, we're going to look at how you calculate percent yield and fold purity. It'll be a lot shorter of a video. And after that, we'll do an example problem where we'll actually have some real numbers and we'll get to calculate some stuff. So hopefully this video helped. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you for watching.